Sheriff. Good evening. Sheriff, today <laughs> is November the 28th of the common era, 1998. Right. Saturday evening. And I'm going to pose a number of questions, Sheriff. Yeah. First, what is your age, Sheriff? I want to see your identification. <laughs> yes. Sheriff? You can see my identification looks straight ahead and down a little bit from the horizontal. You put the magnifying glass away. <laughs> Sheriff, one of the things I'd like to remember, and I want to do some memory like the Masonic Lectures, is I'd like to learn some poetry someday to teach my grandson, Jonathan. Uh, can you please recite some English poetry for us? This tape will be well guarded. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep are in the meadow, the cows are in the corn. That's what you're going to teach your little boy. Go ahead, tell me the poem. It's an old poem. I know, but I, I got to learn it. It dates back to the bards, the okay. B A R D S okay. of England. All right. The bards, they sing of an English king who lived long, long ago. He ruled his land with a mighty hand, though his mind was weak and low. He loved to hunt the royal stag among his royal woods, but better he loved the pleasure of pulling his royal pud. Oh, how he loved to pull his pud. The queen of Spain, a sprightly chain, an amorous Jane was she. She loved to fool with his majesty's tool so far across the sea. So she sent an invitation by royal messenger to ask the king of England to spend a month with her. Oh, what a scandal that was stir. When Philip of France he heard of this, he cried to all his court, she much prefers me rival because me horn is short. So he sent the Duke of Z Z Zip and Zap to give the Queen a dose of clap. But that won't do a thing to dear old England. Hail, hail the bastard King of England. Pretty bubbles in the air. <laughs> Sheriff, can you give me some more poetry? I mean, I want... There was a young man from Yale. From Yale? Yale. Oh, in New Haven. Connecticut. Yes. Whose face grew exceedingly pale because he spent his vacation in self-masturbation on the count of a high price of tail. His name was William Clinton. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on, That's a little more. The end of that. Oh, I want some more poetry. Oh. I became a great lover of poetry, Sheriff. I'm trying to think of the other one I said last night. Trying to think of a very important... Oh, the shamrocks were growing on Broadway. Every gal was an Irish Colleen. Although town of New York was the county of Cork, and the houses were all painted green. The Hudson would flow like the Shannon. Oh, how, rule, how, how real, oh, how true it all seemed. You could hear mother singing sweet Shannon bells ringing. Twas only an Irishman's dream. And then you take your shoes off and go into a soft shoe dance. <laughs> you know, Sheriff, I had a problem a few weeks ago. About two, three months ago, poor Jonathan, he put a, uh, a bead up his nose. A bead. Right. You used to be able to tell a story about... A man that put a peanut in his nose. Right. Can you tell like here? here uh, this, a, this, this man... Salted or unsalted? 
well, uh, I think they were salt of peanuts, and he was sitting there watching John Wayne movies on the telephone, on a television. Right. And sitting up close, so he was getting powder burns. Oh, I see. You know, and this was going on, and he's going one right after another. Right. Like that. And his wife says, calls him, hey, honey, and he turns, and he puts a peanut in his ear instead of his mouth. And he tried to get it out, and he couldn't get it out. He says, honey, honey, come here, come here. I got a peanut in my ear. So she looks in there, and she sticks her fingers in there, for, and she couldn't get it out. She forced it further deeper into the ear. And so she called the daughter. The daughter was down in the recreation room playing records with the boyfriend. And so they heard the commotion. They came up, and she says, what's wrong? What's wrong, mother? Dad got a peanut in his ear, and we can't get it out. So she says, I'll get it out. So she goes to her medicine chest and comes out with a pair of tweezers, and she tries, and she can't get it out. So the boyfriend says, let me get that peanut out. So he takes his forefinger and middle finger and sticks it in the old man's nose like this, and he hits him a shot in the ear, and the peanut jumps out. Quite. And uh, Kyle's mother looks and he says to, she says to her husband, you know, that boy should be a doctor. And the husband says, dearie, according to the smell of his fingers, he should be our son-in-law. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sheriff, do you know, when we used to, it used to be cold in New York. Yeah. You know, in Manhattan. And you know me, I used to stray to Manhattan. Yeah. I used to see a man selling chestnuts. Yeah. With a monkey. Yeah. You know, an organ grinder. Oh, yeah. He used to tell me a story when I was a little boy. Oh. Something about a priest. Oh, this, uh... <laughs> man was organ grinder was uh, standing on a sidewalk turning the little handle of the organ and there was a monkey jumping up and down on top of the organ and the monkey looks up and uh, oh no 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 I got it. I got a backtrack. Go ahead. This guy didn't feel well. This fellow, young fellow, he went to the doctor, and a doctor says, he says, the doctor says, what's your problem? He says, doctor, I've experienced every thrill known to a human. I've been in submarines, airplane, I've been in spacecraft, everything. But there's one thing I have never experienced I'd like to, you to do something for. What me. was that? I want to, I want to uh, ex experience the pangs of childbirth, what a woman goes through when she has to have a baby. So the doctor says, okay, you can get dressed now. He examined them. He says, I'll give you a prescription with instructions on it, and you go to the drugstore and have the prescription filled. So he thanks the doctor, and he goes to the drugstore, and he gives him the pharmacist uh, prescription. The doctor had prescribed eight ounces of croton oil mm -hmm. that you give to constipated horses. And a big cork, a big number 10 cork. And the directions was, you get undressed, lie in bed on your, st drink the croton oil, incite the rectum, the uh, cork into your rectum, and lay in bed on your stomach, and under no circumstances remove that cork, and you'll experience the fangs of childbirth. So the guy drinks the croton oil, shoves the cork up his rear end, lays down in bed on his stomach, and in a few minutes he's got cramps. Man, he's got terrible cramps, he's sweating, he's sweating. And while all this is going on, this organ grinder walks by with his monkey, 
the monkey climbs up the side of a building and looks, sitting on a, he, he gets on a windowsill and he looks and he sees this guy laying in a bed with a cork sticking out of his rectum. So he goes over there to investigate. And when he gets over there, the guy can't hold him no more. Wham! Cork and all comes out. The guy rolls over on his back, wipes the sweat off his brow, and he looks up and he sees the monkey hanging on the chandelier. He looks up, he says, you know, you may be a monkey. You may be full of shit, but you're my darling baby and I love you. <laughs> About uh, a year and a half ago, I had some problems with a police officer. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a traffic violation. Yeah. And I had to go to traffic school. Mm -hmm. But you once told me... Well, there was a state trooper involved, but uh, it, it started off... It was a bizarre thing that happened. Uh, this fellow went into a bar to have a beer and a sandwich, and he's sitting... He, he, he's finished the, the beer and the sandwich, and he ordered another beer. And, and when he was drinking the second beer, this gal comes up to him, and... Uh, wanted a drink, he bought her a drink, she wanted another one, he bought her another one. So, uh, then he invited her out to his, uh, his car. And they got into the car, and she wanted sex, so he gave her sex. And, uh, all of a sudden she wanted some more sex, and he couldn't handle it that quick anymore. So she started to get belligerent, jumping up and down and starting to raise her voice. And he looked across the road, down the road away, and there was a guy fixing a flat tire. So he gets, uh, tells her, oh, you shut up. And he goes over and talks to the guy over there. He says, hey, listen, buddy, I'll fix your flat if you go over there and take care of my girlfriend. The guy says, hey, you got a deal. So this guy's goes now fixing this other man's flat and the guy that with the flat tire goes over there and he's taking care of this gal in the car and they're really going at it hot and heavy and a state patrol comes by and a trooper walks up and looks through the window he says hey what are you doing he says uh, I'm taking care of my wife the trooper says how do I know it's your wife he says I didn't know either until you shined the flashlight in there <laughs> Well, if they were going to book you for these tapes, <laughs> these pornographic <laughs> tapes, you know what I'm going to do? Come on. I'm going to take them to the, uh, you know, the convention down south and show them, Sheriff. Oh, boy, that's what I want to do. Yeah, can I take them to Carnival Oasis? No. Why not? <laughs> take them to the convention center. Hey, hey, Sheriff, <laughs> what's that uh, poem about roses are red or something? No, I don't know. Yeah, something. Roses are red, violets are blue. I don't know that one. You had some English poetry that you used to tell Dorothy Marshall. Oh, that was the poetry about the Bards of England. Oh, that was the Bards of England? Oh, yeah, that's what that was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sheriff, did, did uh, anybody ever try to kill my father with a knife or something? No. Did they threaten him? No. Did Big Mac ever threaten him? No. 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 Who did Morris threaten to kill him? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> your, if your father was threatened with a, by a guy with a knife, <laughs> he wouldn't tell anybody except the laundry man. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But didn't Big Mac once threaten to, to kill him? <laughs> and then he. <laughs> He t my father no, said, I'll your father threatened to kill Big Mac. How? <laughs> what happened? And be, uh, because he called Big Mac a, a crap shooter and a gangster. Oh, he called. How did he? What did he say? What did he say? He says a crap shooter and a gangster. Repeat it. Repeat it. How did he say it? He say, Hey, you're a crap shooter and a gangster. Yeah. And Big Mac says, You shut your. You. Say it. Say it. He said. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> your, dad, your father says, I'm going to take this kitchen knife and I'm going to stab you. And Big Mac says, you son of a bitch, I'm going to throw you out of the window. On the fourth floor. Yeah. <laughs>
then yeah. there was peace in the valley. Yeah, we, 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 who made peace? <laughs> your my, father. My father. Yeah, who did he protect? <laughs> he protected your father. Moshe, huh? Yeah, and yeah. slapped the shit out of Mac. Yeah. Big Mac. Yeah. 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 He was a troublemaker. Yeah. What about me, Sheriff? Did I ever cause trouble? <laughs> no. You, you didn't cause trouble. You walked around eyeing up all those women there on the, in the apartments. Yeah. 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 You knew a lot of stuff that went on over there. Yeah. Yeah. But Grandpa and I were buddies, were we? Yeah. Yeah, we went to work every morning, didn't we, Sheriff? Yeah, downtown, then took the ferry boat across. That's right. To the island. He right. sat and played chess with you. Right. What do you remember best about Grandpa, Sheriff? ...to witness something with a Sacramento police officer at night. There were two cars stopped or something. Oh, yes, you did. Remember the policeman had to go back with a flashlight to another car? Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. I uh, don't, 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 Mickey. I don't want you to get forgetful on me, Sheriff. I'm not getting oh. forgetful. I'm, I, I want to be sure of my facts. Oh, okay. Because I don't want you remember, to... You remember that California policeman, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it, it was a bizarre starting to... to with this thing. It was a state trooper. Right. Yeah. Everything about Grandpa was the best. Yeah. Sweetest man that ever lived. Sweetest man that ever lived. He was a great man. And I know he loved you. Right. He loved all his grandchildren, didn't he? Sure did. Yeah. He had a he had a fabulous ethic, didn't he, Max? Yeah. And an unshakable belief in God, didn't he? He did that all right. Right. He did that all right. He loved Mary too. He sure did. He sure did. And she loved him too. Right. And uh You know, Sheriff. Through he left us a lot of legacies, didn't he? Yep, through all the fooling around. Yeah. We have a rich background from him, don't we, Sheriff? We sure do. Yeah. We sure do. He gave us a lot of wisdom, didn't he, Sheriff? He sure did. He yeah. sure did. You think about him often, Sheriff? All the time. No. You know, the... When they leave, they, they leave a void that never gets filled. You ever go back and see the tree that you planted for him, Sheriff? Yeah, I'm back at least once a month when I'm home. Right. We drive right by the trees. And the people that uh, I sold the place to still leave the trees intact. Good. They're right there where they were. There are a lot of trees there. There are trees for good people there. For, uh, yeah, yeah, death all. Right. For your Uncle Mac. What about Uncle Lizzie? Your Uncle Lizzie. Right. For Grandma. Right. They're all there. Yep. I never planted one for Rose because I wasn't living there. No, you weren't there anymore. No. You get depressed when you think about the old days, Max? About the old days? No, they give me a lot of mem uh, good memories. Good memories. We had good memories. The doors to our homes were open all the time. We'd run back and forth, you know. Good memories. What do you think? What do you think about my two grandkids the other day, Sheriff? Oh, they're great. They're just great. They're just. They're just wonderful. They're just wonderful. And I got... How many great-grandchildren do you have, Sheriff? Five. Five boys. Five boys? Five boys. How five? Who has who? Well, Holly has two boys. Right. And Jackie has three boys. Who's married to the Ranger? 
Jackie. They're yeah. down in there. They just got transferred from uh, 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 Fort Wainwright in Alaska right. back down to uh, to Georgia. Uh, he's in. He's a Green Beret in the uh, Special Forces. Right. So it looks like he's going to stay in. He's got. Eighteen years, sir. Right. So you have five great grandsons, sir, Sheriff. Yep. And how many grandchildren you have, Sheriff? I got uh, two grandchildren. How many? Two. You getting over bottles, Sheriff? No. I think you got three, Sheriff. Uh, I got. You got Paul and Lawrence and Jennifer, Sheriff. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I Sheriff. Grand. I got three grandchildren. I got five. I got Holly. Right. Jackie. Right. Paul. Right. Lawrence and Jennifer. You know, Sheriff? Yeah. When you make mistakes like that, I think you're thinking about sex. You got preoccupied. Well, you know, we're talking about my, my relations. Yeah. And my, all my relations, I love, I love sex the best. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff, do you know, do you remember where DeKalb Avenue was? Yeah. Do you remember... Uh, about something about a man he was walking down after, during rush hour and uh, something happened he had some sort of surgery uh, something to do with a, with a hot dog and mustard he had some surgery on his testicles or something no uh, something about an onion dealer with onions something with different onions no. Oh, sure, Sheriff. Ah. Uh, oh, this, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think you remember, yeah. don't you, Sheriff? Yeah. Uh. What happened to that man? Uh. He, you know, he wanted to have a vasectomy or something. And, uh. He wanted to become sterile or something. No. But, Sheriff, start again. Was this man was a tailor? What? He made up slacks. Yeah. Dress slacks. And where did he live on Orchard Street? On Orchard Street. Yeah. He, had, uh, he lived down in a basement apartment. Right. And he had a sewing machine over there and a table and, and bolts of material. And you pick whatever you like and he'd make you uh, like a nice pair of pants like uh, with a little flap over the watch pocket. Right. You know, really classy classy stuff. Never took a vacation. And then one day he decided to take a vacation. And he went down to Miami. Yeah. And he was laying out there on the beach sunning himself and he was saying, boy, I should have done that years ago. Isn't this wonderful? And this big buxom blonde walking down on the beach sees him laying there and she lays down next to him on the be there on the beach and gets to talking to him, and the next thing, you know, uh, she says, uh, will you walk me home? He says, sure. So he walks her home, and the next thing, she's got him in the apartment. And she gives him a good sex job. And he tells her he's leaving the next day. He's got to be back in New York, and he gets back to New York, and he's got, there's something wrong. So he goes to the doctor, and the doctor examines him. He says, you know, you got a venereal disease. So the doctor worked on him and cured him. And about two years later, he decides to go down to Miami again. He, he liked it down there. He went down, laying down there on the beach, and here comes the same buxom blonde. She says, hello there, where have you been? He says, get away from me. She says, didn't I treat you right? He says, yeah, but get away from me. He says, what are you selling this year, cancer? <laughs> hey. Yeah, it's pretty good. Reminiscing about our old times, Oliver Big Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, some time ago, you told me that my father, may God rest his soul, was very accomplished in making ointments for Big Mac. 
Did Big Mac have a problem that required some special pharmacologic agents? Yeah, they used to call it a sound. <laughs> what kind of sound? Like music? Well, and what? now they use them for doing uh, biopsies. Oh, really? Uh, the sound that goes up through the penis, <laughs> and it's got a little pair of scissors on there. Right. I would, they, it's got it's got three bladed knives like a wearing mix, right. and they start these <laughs> knives going, and then they pull it out fast. And why did Big Mac need that? <laughs> well, he was going back to the hall and gave it to him. And he and said, what what did, what did Morris have to do with all of this? Well, Morris lined them up with the hall too. He told them go over there. Yeah. And 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 uh, break her gonorrhea pimple so you can slide in on the bus. <laughs> hey, now really seriously, Maxie, uh -huh. did Big Mac have some kind of? He was a quick. He used to talk to me about a quick trigger. Quick trigger. Yeah, Big Mac. You said had a problem, and Morris had to give him some kind of an anesthetic. No. Yeah. You told me that he had a quick trigger problem. Oh, he was yeah. getting his gun off too fast. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. He was getting his gun off too fast. I don't know what, you gave him something. Some kind of uh, lidocaine or novocaine? Oh, yeah, he, he rubbed it on the, on the head of his pecker. <laughs> yeah. And, it would, and, and, and his erection would stand there longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, I, it may have been Ben Gay he was putting on there. Really? Yeah, yeah. got rid of the pain there. Yeah. It was a fire and fire in the hole. Yeah. Abandoned ship. Yeah. Hey, Maxie, did my father know to work pretty good? Oh, he sure did. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He sure did. He was a great ritualist. Right. <clears throat> he loved you, Maxie. I know that. I loved him, too. Yeah, he loved Izzy, too, very much. Oh, yeah. He always called him the kid. Yeah, we all call him the kid. Yeah. Grandpa used to call him kid boy. Really? Yeah, kid boy. Yeah. Hey, Papa had control over all you guys, didn't he? He sure is. Including Big Mac. Yep. He didn't come home one night. Who, Big Mac? Yeah, on a Saturday. Yeah. And Sunday, Grandpa went out looking for him. He knew about where he was, so he found him. Yeah. And Big Mac seen him, so he grabbed his money off the sidewalk and stuck it in his pocket and started walking, and Grandpa tracked him and caught up with him, told him to get, get home. He, he was shooting crap. Right. And he beat the living stubbins out of him. Right. <laughs> he... How old was he then? Oh, Grandpa? No, Big Mac. Big Mac? Oh, he was a grown man. He was a grown man. He really tore into him. He didn't care, he didn't care about him shooting crap. That's where he knew he'd find him. Yes, he knew he was doing that. He gave him a beating because he had worried Grandma, and he had worried him if something bad happened to him. He was worried. That he was worried for his health. So he laid into him. But you know how Grandpa was? After he smacked him around, the, then he'd go off into the parlor, and he, he'd sit down by himself, Grandpa. Mm -hmm. And I see him wiping the tears off his eyes. But he had to do what he had to do. Right. I got it a few times too, you know. Yeah, he had it. But Morris had. never got it. Uh, Morris, no, Morris. No, Morris. Never he had a special it. relationship with Morris, didn't he? Yeah, uh, Morris. He was very protective. No, no, Morris asked and, and Grandpa wrote checks. Yeah. But he never let him down with the checks, did he? No, no. He was his number one boy. He was sure proud of him, wasn't he? Yeah, he was his number one boy. Yeah, but Grandpa had no favorites, Maxie. 
Remember how proud he was when I graduated from medical school, actually? Oh, yeah, and we were all, we went down and picked up Mary, went down with the little Studebaker, picked up your other grandmother. Right. That's when Mary worked for Adrian's, the candy company yeah. on Utica Avenue. Yeah, and she went down and picked you guys up and took you up to the famous. That's where you yeah. had the uh, uh, dinner at. That's right. I remember. You remember where the graduation was, Maxie? At the famous. No, the gra you know, where we, I graduated in, in the Brooklyn Academy of Science. Yeah. I mean, the, I'm sorry, the, you know, the Brooklyn uh, Academy there. Yeah. Where they show operas and things now. Yeah. But yeah. that was a that was a great night for the whole family. But yeah. do you remember when we were standing on Union Street in Utica Revenue when you came back from Knoxville? Not Knoxville. Louisville. Louisville. Right. And all the women there, you know, the gossips were making fun of you and this and that. I decided not to go to the University of Louisville. No, and yeah. you weren't even set up anywhere then right. when you came back. And I, That's correct. And I put my arm around you and said, Lenny, if you want to be a doctor, you'll be a doctor. Right. And you'll ride around in a big white Cadillac someday. Well, it wasn't a Cadillac, but it was from your other good uncle, Max. Right. Bought you a big Studebaker, a uh, big... Uh, DeSoto. DeSoto. A white DeSoto. White and black, that's right. Yeah. So those were great days, too. Yep. And, uh... Remember when I first started to date Rosie? Well, at, uh... I don't, uh, I don't think so. Uh, but you've known her a lot of years, Maxie. Oh yeah, I know her a lot of years. It was a whole clique of you, and it was the Cats kids, you know. Right. Uh, Heshy. Heshy. Yeah. Every guy you run with turned out made good. That's right. They made good, all of them. All good people. All good people, raised good families, all well off. Right. But, hey, yeah. Maxie. Yeah. You remember Hebrew school on Troy Avenue? Yeah. Alvin and I, Oliver Shulam, huh? Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. By the Schneider Deox. Yeah. You were teaching him with a with a with a hatchet handle. You I had know. To teach him. Yeah, we tried to teach him a little arithmetic, you remember yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. That was the good old days, though. Yeah, they sure were. And his dad was a nice man. Wonderful man. Yeah. Nice man. He sure loved you, I'll tell you that. Max. Yeah. And Becky. Yeah. You know, I've never...